Hello and welcome to the Game Lot Archives. I'm Daniel. And I'm Joe. And today's episode we will be discussing my favourite playable class in Diablo 3, the Necromancer. The Necromancers are mostly avoided by the people of Sanctuary and their noble order is often misunderstood. So misunderstood that the general population don't even realise that their order's official name is the Priests of Rathma. So in today's episode we're going to look at this order's origin, who made them and why, and how they have been protecting Sanctuary ever since. Before we do though, we would love it if you take a second to click that subscribe button. The Priests of Rathma can track their origins all the way back to the earliest years of Sanctuary, right back to the time of the Ancients. We went into this topic in more detail in the previous episode, so click on that link in the top right hand corner to hear that. However, I will very briefly go over the main points now to make sure we're all on the same page. Since the birth of the universe, angels and demons were at war, which quickly turned into a fight over a powerful artifact called the World Stone. However, neither side could get the upper hand, so an angel called Inarius and a demon called Lilith both grew tired of the war and searched for ways to escape it. Eventually the two met and realised they weren't the only ones feeling like this, so joined forces and rallied the others who felt the same. Together this rebel group stole the World Stone and used its powers to create the World of Sanctuary and hide it from both the High Heavens and the Burning Hells. On this new world, the rebel angels and demons settled down and started to have children. These half-angel, half-demon beings were called the Nephilim. The first Nephilim child belonged to Inarius and Lilith, a boy named Linarian. As Linarian grew older, he set off to explore Sanctuary and learn about the world he lived in, as we all do. He grew into a very calm and rational man, so was often thought of as cold-hearted, although in truth he was really caring. He became fascinated with the cycle of life and death, so began to study it. Unfortunately, as he continued to study and explore, a rift started between the inhabitants of Sanctuary. As the Nephilim grew, it became clear they were stronger than both angels and demons put together, so the rebels feared that their powers would lead the heavens and hells straight to Sanctuary. Some believed the Nephilim should be killed to prevent this, while others thought they should be free to live, and if Sanctuary was discovered, the Nephilim could help defend them. This wasn't a demon versus angel debate, it was just a mixture of both on both sides. Linarian's mother, Lilith, decided to save her child and take matters into her own hands and killed every angel and demon on Sanctuary bar Inarius. Who was of course her lover and the father of the child. When Inarius discovered what Lilith had done, he banished her to the void and altered the world stone, causing it to weaken the Nephilim's powers each generation, eventually leading to the birth of mankind. Linarian realised what his father had done and disagreed with it, so rebelled against his father. However, Inarius had tied his powers to the World Stone and was incredibly powerful. He did not tolerate defiance and killed anyone who questions his rulership, so Linarian secretly trained to be stronger, living among the earliest generations of mankind. During his time amongst the humans, he continued his studies into life and death, when a great being called Tragul entered Sanctuary appearing for just the split second when Lilith was banished into the void. It might not have been long, but it allowed Linarian to see him and discover of his existence. Eventually, Inarius learned of his son's rebellion, so to escape his father's wrath, Linarian faked his own death, fleeing into a mysterious realm no one had ever set foot in before. In fact, nobody but Linarian knew it existed, the realm of Tragul. Tragul meaning the one who is forever. Little is known about Tragul and he is shrouded in mystery. Tragul is an ancient dragon-like being who acts as Sanctuary's guardian. His fate is tied to that of Sanctuary's itself. Nobody knows for sure where he came from and we probably never will. Some people believe that he was created from the excess energy of the World Stone while it created Sanctuary while others believe that he saw Sanctuary and willingly chose to protect it. Maybe it's a mixture of the two, and the World Stone's energy didn't create him, but tied his life force to the planet, forcing him to protect it. But we're just speculating, there's no way of knowing for sure. Whatever his true origins are, when Linarian entered his realm, he willingly became a disciple of the dragon. 
wanting to learn everything he could and changing his name into Rathma. Which means student in Tragul's language. And so Tragul taught Rathma the fundamental truths of the universe and that of balance. Lesson one was regarding the angels of heaven. Or the forces of light. And the demons of hell. The forces of chaos. And how their war should never end. If either side wins, it could spell the end of Sanctuary itself. If evil wins, they will turn their bloodlust onto Sanctuary. And if the side of good wins, then the angels will turn in on itself until they are no better than demons. This ties into the second lesson, the concept of the balance, which is otherwise known as the great cycle of being, and how this war naturally, usually, balances itself out. The most recent example is the end of days. Many of the prime evils began to attack Sanctuary directly. During this time, the Nephilim started to return, and Tyrio fell to Earth to guide them balancing the events out naturally, so neither side ever gained the upper hand for too long. However, this balance is sometimes lost, which, if left unchecked, could mean the victory of one side or the other. In modern times, while the balance is mostly preserved by the priests of Rathma, the Templar Order also believe in balance. However, they believe that humans themselves are the true balance, as they are a mixture of both demons and angels. One angel called Malthael was also actively aware of the balance. Due to his bias, because, you know, he was an angel and all, he was blind to the concept that could only see worth in the side of light. For the next 500 years, Rathma and Tragul maintained the balance of Sanctuary, keeping the world hidden from the high heavens and burning hells. In the year 1992, a mage clan summoned the first demon to Sanctuary which led to Hell learning of Sanctuary, despite the pair's best efforts. After this, their goal changed to keeping Sanctuary hidden from Heaven and preventing demonic influence as much as possible. This, of course, failed again in the year 1809, during the events of the Sin Wars. Tragul knew that this world could end up destroying all of existence if left unchecked. And, at the same time, Rathma sensed his mother Lilith's return to Sanctuary, somehow escaping the void, so began searching for a way to stop her. Now, we discussed this in a lot more detail last episode, but Lilith finds a farmer named Aldician and reawakens the dormant Nephilim powers within him. Rathma and Tragul watched this unfold secretively, and saw that Aldician's younger brother, a scholar called Mendelin, had great potential, and slowly initiated contact with him. It took a while to earn his trust, but eventually began to train him in the ways of the balance and the art of necromancy, until Mendelin became the second necromancer in Sanctuary's history. When the Sin Wars ended, most people's memories were completely wiped to the events. However, Mendelin's extended time with Rathma and Tragul saved him from this memory loss. Rathma's final instructions to Mendelin was to go out and train additional disciples so the balance would always be protected. And that's exactly what Mendelin did, forming a mage clan named the Priests of Rathma, a clan dedicated to maintaining the balance, and following in the footsteps of Tragul and Rathma's teaching. The symbol of their clan is a five-side pattern, each side representing one of the five elements that they believe Tragul is linked to, which are earth, air, fire, water, and time. They believe that as these elements make up creation, they are tied to Tragul. As Mendelin trained the priests in the ways of the balance, he also taught them his skills of necromancy as well. Obviously, being a scholar, he also recorded all of his knowledge and lessons into great tomes called the Books of Kalan. Kalan is the name that Tragul and Rathma gave to Mendelin. These books are still used and added to by the priests to this day. In fact, one of the Order's first leaders, called Death Speaker Mikan, was incredibly gifted and added many potent spells to these books, which are still some of the Order's strongest to this day. The priests of Rathma soon established a headquarters for themselves in eastern Kedjistan. The reason this region attracts so many of the clans is the variety of fauna and flora that can be experimented on. In fact, the magic has steeped so deeply into the jungle that there are many unnatural things deep within. The priest's home is even more secluded than most, however. The entrance to their home is hidden in the trunk of a giant tree, 
which opens to a long winding staircase which eventually leads into a vast underground city called Necropolis. Necropolis's seclusion allows the priest to study their magic in private. Which is particularly useful when the order is so mistrusted by outsiders. Then, when the balance is disrupted, a priest will be dispatched to restore it. While out in the field, the priest will actively seek out new recruits. Once fully trained, the priest's role is very lax, and they are encouraged to work out their own path to maintain balance. When someone does join the order, they begin as initiates, and are trained to set aside all emotional connections, so they can better serve the balance. When they have learned to do this, they will then tackle any challenges as if it was an academic challenge. As they learn, they increase rank. The ranks are initiate, apprentice, acolyte. Apprentice and acolyte might be different names for the same rank though. Necromancer, master necromancer, and finally Death Speaker, the leader of the priests. Being a low ranking priest doesn't mean you're not trusted however. During the end of days it was a mere acolyte whose training was actually incomplete who was dispatched to defeat the prime evils. Because of their greater understanding of the world, the priests of Rathma don't follow a deity and have no respect for gods. The closest thing they have is Tragul himself, who is a focal point of the balance and where all necromancers draw their powers from. Tragul himself, however, has not been seen since the Sin Wars. This, of course, worries the priests. However, they still have faith that he's still watching over Sanctuary and actively believes he carries Sanctuary on his back. Rathma himself is also venerated and is depicted as a giant serpent but I don't really know why, because he's a dude. I think my, own, my only guess is my only guess is maybe because Tragul's kind of like a serpent dragon, so maybe it's like that's a privileged creature. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Their respect for Rathma is most apparent when a member is granted the role of Master Necromancer. They are presented with a bone from one of Rathma's minions, which is often used in their glove. Tradition to adorn bones in their arm was started by Mendelim himself to symbolise their mastery over death. And that brings us to the signature of the priests of Rathma and the entire reason they're mistrusted. Their mastery over death and the other spells they can perform. Magic which no one else in Sanctuary has yet to master without becoming corrupted. As the priests studied the great cycle, their understanding of the balance grew, as did their knowledge of life and death. And it soon became apparent to the priest that death was just a natural part of the balance. The priests believe that when they die, their soul will travel to another plane of existence where they will fulfill a new role for the balance. With this knowledge, they began to experiment between twisting the border between the living and the dead. In fact, there's very little magic the priests won't study and experiment with unless there is a chance of corruption. That being said, however, some of the spells they use would corrupt a normal human. However, due to the priest's higher understanding of the balance and their separation from an emotional state means that they are actually very resilient to the corruption. They quickly mastered the art of necromancy and can raise the dead at will. This skill, along with their mastery of blood magic and curses, have led outsiders to refer to the group as necromancers, and they've been largely shunned. And on top of these creepy spells, their lack of emotional attachment also leads the members to sound and act quite cold and factual, leaving many people to mistrust the order. Using necromancy, the priests are able to summon the long dead as skeletons or their most recent victims. On top of this, necromancers can control both blood and prime magic. Prime magic is an ability to manipulate prime energies that that flows through all living things. It's largely used by the Ascari tribes, however in a very different way. The Ascari use prime magic to empower themselves, giving them huge bursts of strength or speed. Necromancers on the other hand manipulate their enemies' energy, laying powerful curses on them. The last magic style they employ is blood magic, which is what you can probably guess, spells they cast or enchant using their own blood. Blood magic is incredibly difficult to master as every spell drains the caster's life force, meaning it's a delicate balance between healing and casting blood spells. 
However, smart necromancers can use this wildly in conjunction with their other spells. They largely use an energy called essence, the life force that gives things life. Be it a living human, angel or demon, or even actually one of the dead reanimated using necromancy. The priests cannot generate essence themselves and need to harvest it by killing enemies. Blood magic might be risky, uh, but it doesn't require essence as it takes blood instead. So it's a good means of killing enemies to gather more essence. While these darker spells would corrupt any other mage, the Priests of Rathma only use their power to serve the balance, and never to disrupt it. Because of this dedication to their cause, the Priests do not view their actions as good or evil, and believe they are actually above that. To a Priest of Rathma, every action is simply obedient to the ba obedience to the balance, and they are not above killing angels or demons. They will occasionally help the High Heavens, but only when it serves to restore balance to Sanctuary. As soon as that's done, the Alliance will end. They resent any power that treats humanity as part of a larger cosmic game, and their overall goal is to rid Sanctuary of any interfering forces. It's not really a surprise that many necromancers don't die of old age. Unfortunately, recent events have hit the Priesthood hard. The angel Maphael attacked Sanctuary in an attempt to wipe out all of humanity. His army attacked Necropolis, killing many priests, including their leader, Death Speaker Jorsan, and Master Necromancer Ordan. Ordan the Necromancer, who was training the unnamed Necromancer who you play as in Diablo 3 in the canon, who helped kill Maphael. Maphael was in the Pandemonium Fortress, and the Acolyte met with his old master's spirit who bid them to take on the mantle of Death Speaker and continue to train more priests to keep the balance safe. And that's everything we know about the Priests of Rathma. We hope you enjoyed the episode, and as always, their episodes are not only lessons, but also discussions. So let us know any questions you have on necromancers in case you think we've missed anything, or even what your favourite necromancer fact or spell is. Um, we try and read and reply to every single comment. And we will see you next episode. Thank you.